Our next speaker is Beth Tucker Long, and she is a PHP developer and advocate at Cold Climate, and also a co-organizer of Medicine PHP. Yes. Beth is a firm believer in promoting community, and she will be talking about mentoring today, which I believe is something really important so a community can grow and actually be better at what you're doing. So everyone, welcome Beth. Uh, and give her a round of applause. <laughs> all right. Can everyone hear me all right? Yep. Yes? OK. So as Daniel was just saying, I am a PHP developer. I'm actually no longer with Code Climate, <laughs> but that's OK. Um, they're still awesome. But I am now a freelance developer. So I run my own consulting company, and I'm a stay-at-home mom. Some of you may have seen Liam and Chris running around here as well, so I like to bring them along to conferences when I can. I'm also a user group leader, and as far as mentoring goes, I am a mentor and also an apprentice. So I have a mentor as well as I am a mentor. As far as audience participation goes, I am fine if you'd like to ask me questions at any time. Um, Raise your hand, wave it around a bit if I'm not noticing, but feel free to ask me questions at any point. I'd rather you ask me a question before you forget. <laughs> so otherwise, uh, my Twitter handle is gonna be in the bottom corner of every slide. So if you do think of a question and you don't wanna ask it, you can tweet to me right during the talk and I will make sure to answer the questions after the talk. So as far as what this talk is not, this is not going to be a magic formula. There is not one right answer for mentoring for everyone. What I'm gonna talk about are just some tools and things that you should consider when looking at being a mentor or at being an apprentice. So some of the things that I talk about will not work for you and others will. So try the things that work well for you. So I'm gonna start with apprentices. The very first step, if you want to find a mentor, is you have to define what you are looking for. You can't find a mentor to help you if you don't know what you want help with. So, why do you want to have a mentor? What do you want to get out of this relationship? Do you want to learn something new? Do you want someone who will encourage you to keep trying new things? Do you want someone who's going to make sure that you follow up on the things that you say you're going to do? What kind of a person do you want to have this relationship with? And what are your goals? Your goals should be tangible things. You want to be able to measure these goals. So it can't just to, you don't want to say, oh, I just want to be better. Well, that's not something we can measure and we'll never know if you've succeeded because of course you can always be better. So you want a goal that you can achieve. And it doesn't have to be, oh, I want to do achieve these things over the next 10 years. Just think of, okay, what's the first step I want to achieve? And then when you achieve that first step, then you can evaluate what you want to achieve next. So it doesn't have to be a long-term thing, just what are you looking for? And when do you want to accomplish it by? When considering who you want to have mentor you, or when talking to a mentor and asking them to mentor you, you need to be honest with them about what kind of a timeline you are looking for. Some mentors have a lot of free time to work on mentoring, others have a very small amount of time. So you need to find someone who's going to fit into your timeline. Do you have a project that you want to finish? Let's say you want to talk at a conference, and the CFP closes in two weeks. You need to be honest with your mentor that we need to meet this week because it closes next week. So those kinds of things are gonna be very important. The next step is to define the relationship that you're going to have with your mentor. What do you expect from them? Do you expect them to email you? Do you expect them to meet with you in person? Do you expect them to contact you and be in charge of initiating the conversations? Or would you rather just email them when you have a question and they will respond? Do you want to have set meetings every week, once a month, once a quarter? When do you want to meet with them? And the biggest step is committing to the work. Being an apprentice is very hard. It's a lot of hard work. It's very rewarding, but it is a lot of hard work. You are asking this mentor to give up their time and their knowledge to you, and so it's really important that you honor and respect that and help them make sure that you are staying committed to the things that you say you will get done. 
So make sure you are very committed. Once you have these steps, you can find a mentor. And where do you find one? Well, if you're looking for a mentor on a PHP-related topic, phpmentoring.org has a list of mentors. And actually, right now, there are a lot of mentors on phpmentoring.org that are just waiting for an apprentice because there are not as many people looking for um, mentors, or yes, not as many people looking for mentors as there are people who are wanting to be mentors. So if you would like to have a mentor, there is a list of people waiting to hear from you. Other places you can find a mentor, there's an IRC channel, there's also a GitHub, so you go on to GitHub for PHP mentoring and you can add in your information and then you'll be in the list of people looking for a mentor. The IRC channel is PHP Mentoring. And if you've never used IRC before, there is a free web chat, so you don't have to install any software or do anything. You can just go to Freenode's website and sign in and ask for a mentor. You can also find mentors by attending talks at conferences, like here. You can check out slides on SlideShare, so whatever topic that you would like to learn about, see if there's anyone who's given a talk about it. You can check joined in for people who've spoken about it, or php.net slash conferences also has a list of conferences that may be in your area, or that you can check for different conferences on certain topics. User groups are a great place to find a mentor as well, especially if you would like to find someone local to you. Your local user group is a great place to check. Uh, php.ug will help you find a user group close to you. Nomad PHP does presentations every month. They have some presentations in Europe and also in the US. So depending on where you are, they may have some suggestions for um, people who know about the topic you're looking for. And you can also search Meetup for talks as well. Here's a number of different podcasts that you can listen to. If you find a podcast on the topic you're interested in, contact the person they interviewed during the podcast and see if they would like to be your mentor. Now let's take a look at the other side of the relationship. And I'm going through this very quickly because this is actually a one hour talk that I'm squeezing into 40 minutes. So like I said, please ask questions if you'd like, otherwise I'm gonna keep powering through everything. So if you would like to be a mentor, you need to define your needs as well. The process is very similar to getting ready to be an apprentice. When you want to be a mentor, you need to understand what you want to get out of the relationship. Yes, you want to help someone, but is there something specific you want to help them do? Do you want to be a mentor who helps them accomplish maybe writing something, or speaking, or learning a new project and help them build something? What kind of mentoring do you want to do? It's very important for you to understand because even if you may know something that someone wants to learn, if that's not the kind of mentoring you want to do, it's not gonna work out very well. Make sure you know when do you want to meet? How do you want to meet? Do you want to meet with your apprentice in person? Again, define those kinds of things. It's important to be very, very honest in order for these relationships to be successful. And while you're looking at how you want to talk and how you want to get together, it's important to set your boundaries. Boundaries are very important in a mentoring relationship because it helps everyone know what to expect out of the relationship so how often are you willing to be contacted? Are you okay with them calling you on the phone or texting you? Or would you prefer that they contact you only via email? Setting these expectations when you start the relationship is a lot easier than trying to change the workflow once you're into it. So make sure that you identify what am I comfortable with? Am I comfortable with this person showing up at my house to ask me a question? Or am I not comfortable with that? Also, decide how you will handle it if your apprentice crosses a boundary. Say, you would prefer they contact you via email, but they start calling you on the phone. If you think about these things in advance, it is easier to deal with them when it happens. Next step, what do you know about? What will you be able to mentor someone about? What do you wanna teach, and what level do you wanna teach it at? Do you want to mentor a beginner, or would you like to mentor someone who's at a more advanced level? And, of course, committing to the work. Just like with being an apprentice, being a mentor is a lot of hard work. 
And this mentor, or this apprentice, is relying on you as a mentor. So make sure that you can commit to the work and make sure that you are willing to do what that person is, is wanting out of the relationship. So where do you find an apprentice? Well, once again, phpmentoring.org. Not too many apprentices on there right now, but hopefully after this talk there'll be a few more. You can also check IRC channels, Stack Overflow, Reddit, any place where people are asking questions. If someone is asking a question about a certain topic that you know about, maybe they would like to be mentored on that topic, and you can offer. Once you have um, someone who would like to be mentored, or so you found someone who would like to mentor you, make sure that those goals that you've set up and your needs, make sure those are all in sync. You want to make sure that you both want the same things to happen. You both want to communicate the same way. You both want to achieve the same sort of goals. And you want to make sure that your boundaries align. It's very important to keep the relationship happy, to make sure that you both agree on the same set of boundaries. There's also just a little bit of chemistry involved. Part of being a mentor and uh, mentoring someone involves a lot of trust and getting to know someone and being willing to sort of get to know them on a personal level as well because it will make things easier. And it's a little bit more fun if you can be friends as well. So make sure that you're comfortable talking to that person and that it's easy to sort of talk about the things that you want to talk about. When starting the relationship, make sure that you create deliverables. These have to be tangible things, going back to the measurable goals. And what you want to do is set these things and set real dates for them. Don't say, oh, yeah, we'll do this one first and then afterwards we'll do this. Because having those deadlines makes sure that you stay focused on achieving these goals in the relationship. So make sure that you set a real date. You know, October 15th, we will have this done. And you don't, as I said, you don't have to schedule super far out, maybe just the first three months. Set the times that you're going to meet. If this is just going to be back and forth via email, that's fine. But if you're going to meet to talk over the phone or hang out or whatever, make sure you set the dates for multiple meetings because right now, at the beginning of the relationship, you are both most excited and committed about getting things done. So setting those dates right away can be very helpful to make sure that the relationship will keep moving forward. Also, setting three meetings in advance can help you set up that pattern for meeting, and it makes it more of a habit, which makes it easier to remember to do. And one thing that's important to do, too, is to continually reevaluate how things are working. So set a real date for a time when you want to reevaluate how things are going, what the goals are. Are these still the goals that you want to meet? Because as you learn things, your goals can change. So you want to make sure you set aside time to talk about that so that the mentor isn't working really hard for one goal, but now the apprentice is thinking about something else. You want to make sure you're both still focused on the same goal. You also want to make sure you talk about how are things going? Am I emailing you too much? Am I not emailing you enough? Are you happy with how much communication we've had? And we want to make sure that you are focused on keeping that open communication so that not only can you talk about, well, yes, things are not going well. How are we going to talk about that? What kind of questions can you ask to get the other person to talk about something they may not be comfortable with? When you start your... <clears throat> When you start your relationship, maybe you talk about, if something's going wrong, would you like me to email you? <laughs> Thank you. Would you like me to email you? Or would you like me to talk to you in the, on the phone? Would you prefer I talk to you in person? Also talk about what kind of tone you would like in those emails. Would you like it to be short? Or would you like a very long explanation about how things are going? Make sure that those kinds of communications align. One second. Now, one thing that is very difficult is ending a mentoring relationship. The important thing to remember when you end a mentoring relationship 
is that it doesn't mean that you failed. It means that something is not aligned with your goals or your workflow or your preferences for the relationship, and that's okay. It's important to end the relationship when those things do not align. Because the longer you stay in a mentoring relationship that's not working, the more frustrating it will become and the less likely you will want to get into a relationship that will work better. So you don't want to waste your time in a mentoring relationship that's not working. And that goes from both sides. So mentors, sometimes it's not working with an apprentice. Or an apprentice, it may not be working with a mentor. And it can be very difficult to tell someone that, especially because that person has given up their time, they have given up their you know, knowledge to you, they've worked hard on things, but it's important to be very honest. And it's important to remember, like I said, that it doesn't mean you've failed, it just means it's not working. Now, a couple of things, yes? Wouldn't ending of a mentorship relationship also mean success? You know, the whole goal was mentor someone to be a speaker, they've spoken two or three times now, they can leave the nest, so you know, end on a success note. Yes, yes. Mentoring relationships absolutely can also end in success. <laughs> Thank you for, <laughs> I didn't mean to make this sound so sad. <laughs> I just like to bring up that, you know, it, it is important to understand that it's not a failure. But if you have achieved your goals, then take a look at, do you still need this mentoring relationship? And that's why it's important to define those goals tangibly and to set those dates to reevaluate the relationship. So let's say, you know, as Larry pointed out, if you have spoken at conferences, now you have a new goal, now you want to write a book. Well, the same mentor who helped you speak at a conference may not be the best mentor to help you write a book. And that doesn't mean that mentor is no good, it just means that you've moved on to a new goal and your goals do not align anymore. So celebrate the success you had and agree to find a new mentor. So also, when ending a relationship, it can be very nice to offer to write a recommendation for a next mentor or the next apprentice, or send them a thank you gift of thank you for helping me if you are the apprentice. Those kinds of appreciation things, even just an email to say thank you, can really go a long way. When achieving certain things, you wanna celebrate those successes. So if you're the mentor and your apprentice achieves their goal, send them a note and congratulate them. Or if they're a speaker, maybe get them a laser pointer or a clicker or something to celebrate. You know, those kinds of tangible things can be very meaningful because every time your apprentice uses it to speak, they'll remember how you helped them and it will keep that relationship positive. So small things can make a really big difference. Now, I'm standing up here talking about mentoring and it's because I have been very, very passionate about helping people find mentors or be mentors, but it's not because I am a perfect mentor or a perfect apprentice. And so I wanna take a moment and tell you about a few things that I have done to let you know that sometimes it doesn't work out, but keep trying, <laughs> give it another shot. So um, I had someone who approached me, they wanted to, um, I used to be the editor-in-chief of PHP Architect Magazine, and they wanted to write an article. And this was one of my very first times being a mentor and I was really excited and I'm, yes, of course I'll mentor you, I'll help you. And we did not define expectations and we did not set goals and uh, we never talked about, you know, how often is this, how often do you need help? And it ended up being that they needed a lot more help than I had time to give them. And because I had not made a plan for how I was gonna handle this, I was very lost because I didn't wanna just go, I can't, I can't talk to you every day, I, I'm too busy, you know? And instead, it just started becoming frustrated. And what worked really well for this is that um, this person was someone who I saw in person from time to time. And so we were able to sit down in person and have sort of the conversation we should have had at the beginning and we were able to sort of identify, okay, maybe I'm not the right person to help you. And I felt very badly about that at first because I felt like I was letting them down. But what was really letting them down was when I wasn't being honest about how much I could help them. And so it was better for them to find someone who could talk to them every day. 
And so we were able to sort of work that out. And so it ended up being positive at the end, but if we had done that at the beginning, we could have saved a lot of frustration on both sides. Um, other types of things, so um, in a relationship where I was the apprentice, I found a mentor who was uh, local to me so we could meet in person because I knew if it was just over email, it would be too easy to ignore and I would not remember to do <laughs> what I had promised to do. So I had started learning a little bit more about um, my needs and what I'm good at and what I'm not. And so we agreed, okay, we are gonna meet in person once a month. And I was like, oh, once a month, that should be great. And we set a time after two months to reevaluate how things were going. And it was good because I discovered that once a month is not enough time. I needed maybe once every two weeks, otherwise I would be really good for the few days after our meeting, and then I'd start to forget to check on things, and I'd start to forget to do things, and then the next meeting came around, and I'm like, oh, I didn't finish that, and I didn't get it done. And so I started learning that I need to check in more often than once a month. So we had a meeting scheduled, though, to talk about that, talk about how things were going, and talk about how everything is working. Is it working? Is it not? And I was able to bring up, because that was the point of the meeting, so it made it easier for me to bring up, hey, is there any chance you could meet more often? And if you can't, that's okay, but right now, I'm not staying focused during the last part of the month. And we were able to talk about it, and they were willing to meet twice a month instead of once, and it has worked very well since then. So those meetings to reevaluate how things are going can be very, very helpful. Okay, anybody have any questions? No? Okay. Like I said, I'm sort of powering through a lot of stories, and I want to make sure that we talk about things, so. Now, when finding mentors, I'm going to sort of jump back now. Finding mentors and finding apprentices can be very frustrating as well. You have to be patient and you have to be ready for it to take a while. So if you have a very short deadline, it may be too short to find someone. These steps do take a while to sort of go through and process. Getting the relationship started can take a while, so be prepared to be patient and to wait for those kinds of things. Make sure that when you are looking for someone, if the first person says no, don't give up. There are lots of reasons why someone may say no. It could just be that they're very busy, perhaps they have too many mentor, um, apprentices already, or perhaps they, they just don't have the, um, the bandwidth to support what you want to do. So make sure, if someone says no, don't be discouraged, it's not you, <laughs> ask someone else. It could take three or four, five times before you find the right person. But finding the right person is more important than finding someone quickly. I have a number of different resources here that can help you while you're going through things. Some of them are podcasts about mentoring, which I highly recommend you listen to. And PHP Mentoring has a lot of great guidelines about how to approach a mentor and how not to approach a mentor. So those can be really helpful. Management Mentors is not PHP specific, but they can ha help you find someone if you're looking for a topic outside of PHP. And the APA is a disability organization, but they have some really great tips as well for mentoring, especially for approaching communication. And the Ladders has career mentoring advice. So if you're looking for someone to specifically help you in your career, help you learn new skills, perhaps become a manager, those kinds of things, there's some really great tips there as well. Mentoring is obviously learning new skills, learning knowledge, advancing your career, or improving yourself as a person. But the important thing to remember about mentoring is that it's very active. There's a lot of work involved. It's not an easy thing. So don't think, oh, I'm just gonna be a mentor and it'll be super easy and I don't have time for a lot of stuff right now, but I'll just squeeze it in. It's not an easy thing to just squeeze in. It's very time consuming and you are committing to helping someone. So you wanna make sure that you are willing to put in the time that it takes because it's really easy for it to sort of fall by the wayside and just become 
something you don't think about very often. And then all of a sudden you realize, oh, it's been two months and I don't know what they're doing, or I haven't heard from my mentor and I kind of forgot I even had one. It's very easy to fall into that. So you need to stay very proactive and very active about how are you going to learn? How are you going to participate? How are you going to keep improving the relationship? All right. Anyone have any questions? Um, that's a good question, and it really depends on the person. Oh, yes. Um, so the question was, if you know a lot of people in the community, is it better to find a mentor or an apprentice that you already know outside of the mentoring or apprentice relationship, or is it better to find someone you don't know? And the, the answer to that is sort of going to be, well, it depends on you. Will you be more comfortable working with someone that you already know? Sometimes, if you know the person outside of the mentoring relationship, it can make ending the mentoring relationship a little bit more complicated, or it can make setting boundaries a little bit more complicated, because you already have social boundaries set with this person, but your mentoring boundaries may be different. And a lot of times, that can be confusing for people, because you know, they may say hi to you every day on IRC, but that doesn't mean you want them asking you mentoring questions every day or every time you pop into IRC. So it kind of, it means you're merging those two worlds and you need to decide if you're comfortable with those two worlds being merged or if you would prefer that they stay separate. Additionally, um, thanks. Additionally, one of the things that can make things easier is if you already have sort of a friendship then you already know a bit more about how that person responds to things, how to talk to them about things. And so you may already have that trust built up where you feel comfortable asking them questions that maybe you wouldn't necessarily feel comfortable asking a stranger because you already know them and you trust them that they want to help you learn and they're not gonna make fun of you for not knowing something, you know? So it really depends on your personality. Any other questions? Yes? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I was wondering, what is your opinion uh, between um, the comparison of RC meetings and face-to-face -face meetings? Which one do you prefer? Um, for me personally, I like to have face-to-face -face meetings if I can, because for me, it's helpful for me to see, oh, they look confused. You know, when you're typing, you don't always get that nuance of, oh, they seem confused, even, you know, they're saying, oh yeah, I understand, but they look confused, so let's talk about this some more. So I like to have that sort of face-to-face -face connection. I also feel a little bit closer to someone if I talk to them face-to-face, -face because then they are not just some name on a screen, they're a real person to me. Um, but again, that's my personal preference. Um, it also works very well if, depending on the skill you want to learn, perhaps you want to just email back and forth. And, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It, it really depends on what you are most comfortable with. Some people are more comfortable asking a question if it's over text because they're typing it. But asking a question to someone's face is more intimidating for them. So it, it really needs to be what, what will work best for you. Well, I wanted to ask, uh, when you are a mentor and uh, you have an apprentice, and sometimes you see that uh, your apprentice does not perform according to your expectations, and sometimes you have to force them or to push them to do something <laughs> yes. uh, without, you know, uh, I wanted to ask you, what, what's your recipe to, <laughs> to make people do things without forcing them too <laughs> yes. much? Yes, um, that's a great question. It is a fine line between you know, forcing someone to do something and um, encouraging them to get things done. Because if you're forcing them to do it, then they are probably going to get frustrated, they're going to get angry, they're gonna cringe every time they see your name pop up in the email. And, and that's, not, that's not what we want, right? 
On the, on the other hand, some people, like me, need more pushing than other people. I, I get sidetracked on lots of projects. Every time I see something new, I'm like, oh, that looks cool, I'll try that. That looks cool. And then I, I lose sight of the goals that I was trying to follow. So for someone like me, it's really helpful for me to have someone push me a little harder, like, did you get your homework done? You know? And so that can be really helpful. I would say that for me, what I like to do is when you start a mentoring relationship, when you're defining those expectations and those goals, define the kinds of communication you'd like to have. Do you want your mentor to email you two days before your homework is due to make sure you have it done? Or do you want them to call you? Or do you want them to just leave you alone and let you get it done when you get it done? And if you miss the deadline, that's your responsibility. You know, what do they expect and what do they want? So those kinds of things can, are, are helpful to set up in advance. I like emailing people and making sure that those deadlines are scheduled so that everybody knows what's expected. Okay, on October 15th, you have to have the title of your talk and the topic. And then we'll work on the abstract. And in two weeks, you will have the abstract written and so on. And so you have those clear deadlines. And then what I like to do is email them a couple days before and say, don't forget, we're meeting on Tuesday to talk about your title, so make sure you have one ready, or things like that. So more consistent communication. And one thing that's been really helpful for me with that is scheduling emails in advance. So when we set those deadlines, then I will schedule some emails to say, okay, three days before, because then I don't have to remember three days before to do it. It will just automatically go out. Um, but then if you change the deadlines, you have to remember to go back and change your scheduled emails. <laughs> Otherwise, they're like, no, we rescheduled that. And it's like, oh, yeah, I sent you that email actually two months ago. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. So you have to remember that you did that. Um, you can also, if um, you, know, you are talking with someone and they use Twitter a lot, you can schedule tweets in advance to tweet at them and be like, hey, looking forward to seeing you on Tuesday or you know, looking forward to our chat, just a reminder, I'm here and I'm going to be expecting something to be done. <laughs> so uh, there's lots of different ways you can communicate and um, the more you can do in advance so that you don't have to remember to do it later can be really helpful. So finding those tools to help you schedule things in advance. So, yeah. Thanks a lot. Yes. Hello, thank Hello. you for your talk, it was very nice. Uh, you mentioned that it's easier if you are friends, uh, but where should you put the border? I mean, do you think if you get too close it will be a problem for your relationship or it depends on the person? It really does depend on the person. Um, I know for me personally, I like to mentor people that I am not friends with. And the reason for that is because for me, if I'm hanging out with someone socially, you know, we go have lunch, I feel like, oh, I should talk about the mentoring because I'm your mentor. And then it sort of, it, it, I like to have those separate. So, okay, I'm, we're having social time and now I'm a mentor and I'm teaching and I, I feel like I need to be more responsible and <laughs> official or something. So for me, I like to mentor people who are not my friends. Um, that's not to say I wouldn't mentor a friend if they asked me. Um, it would just need to have more boundaries defined in advance if I was going to be mentoring a friend than maybe I would with someone that I'm not friends with. Just because, like I said, I, I don't want to feel like every time I see them I need to be in the mentoring role. And also, you know, when you have a friend that you're very close to, and you're having a frustrating time in your mentoring relationship, maybe you want to talk to your friend about it, but if they're your apprentice or your mentor, then you lose that, that social <laughs> outreach as well. So, But like I said, it depends on the person. Some people need that extra trust from being friends first, and then that trust helps them do better in the mentoring relationship because they can be more honest about what they have questions about. Mm -hmm. We have another question here. Mm -hmm. I uh, just wanted to ask if you uh, can think of any quick example of something that you have learned or some experience uh, 
uh, uh, being a mentor because like the takeaway from the rela relationship is much more easy to comprehend as for the apprentice but something you have gotten out of it being a mentor. Yes. Um, so being a mentor, I actually always feel like I learn more than when I'm an apprentice. I learn a lot as an apprentice as well, but being a mentor for forces you to know as much as you can about a topic because you don't know what questions they're going to ask you. So I feel you do learn a lot. And one of the things that I learned a lot about was um, I had been speaking at conferences for a little over a year when I mentored um, someone who also wanted to speak at conferences. And it forced me to sit down and be like, okay, what does make a good speaker? And it's like, oh, that would be really great. And I just told them to do it and I don't do it. <laughs> so I should do that too. A lot of times, you know, I, I encourage people, I say, oh, when you write your talk, you should always have a few extra slides at the end. In case no one has any questions, then you can pop up some more slides and finish your talk. Oh, I almost never actually do that because I always forget. So when I mentor someone, it reminds me of all the good things that I should be doing too, all, the <laughs> all of the good tips that I should follow as well. So for the mentor, um, outside of actual check-in times, what kind of work is the mentor doing? The apprentice, obviously, they've got whatever their homework is. Right. Uh, what, what's the mentor doing outside of those check-ins? So I recommend that mentors take a look at what the upcoming goals are and make sure that you are prepared to talk about the topic that's coming up. So if, let's say, you are helping them build something on a new framework that they wanted to learn. Well, if you are going to be talking about Silex, make sure that you check the docs, make sure you know all the new features, maybe double check that you know how to install it, and make sure that you're ready for the kinds of things that you're going to need to do with them at the next meeting. So it is important to prepare as a mentor as well, even while they're doing their homework. Also, thinking about what's their next homework assignment going to be, or what kind of project will they need to work on, what steps will they need to take, and what kind of encouragement might they need during those times, so you can be ready to schedule that. Any other questions? Uh, I've got a question. If we have a problem with, on step zero, define your needs, what do you recommend to do? Because if you don't get uh, step zero right, uh, yes. everything will fall. Yes, step zero is very, very important. And it can be very difficult. It's hard to necessarily know exactly what you want. You may think, oh, mentoring is great. I would love to have a mentor. But it's hard necessarily to think, well, what do I want to learn about? What specific things? So take a look at, you know, if you want to speak at a conference, well, what do you want to talk about? Those kinds of things. If you don't have something easy like that, if you just want to improve your development skills, maybe take a look at what are the new things that everyone is talking about. You know, Take a look at phpdeveloper.org and see what articles people are reading. Are any of those things interesting to you? Well, start with that. And then as you learn about that, you may realize something else you want to learn, and you can reevaluate and, and move to that. But finding a topic, Excuse me. Finding a topic just to get started on, started on can be a good way to at least get your feet wet and try things out. Any other questions? I don't think so. So time flies by when you're talking about that. Yes. And I'm sure everyone would like to applaud you for your talk. Okay. So Thank applause. You. To me, it was really. I, I have two more quick slides. If everyone, oh, okay. sorry. Um, so sorry, you, sorry. you can find me. Um, you can find me on Twitter, as I said. Contact me anytime. My slides will be up here right after the talk. Give me about 15 minutes to upload them, but my slides will be there. And I will also be putting the link to the slides on Joined In as well. So if you need the slides, you can go to Joined In. Also, leave me some feedback. That would be great. 
And also, this is my email address. You are also welcome to email me if you have more questions about mentoring or if you would like help finding a mentor or an apprentice. Feel free to email me as well. Thank you. Mm -hmm.